Well, let's bring in our panel of parliamentary journalists now to talk about some of the day's events. Susan Delacourt is a columnist and Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star. Joel Denis Bellavance is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for La Presse. And Christy Kirkup is a National Affairs Reporter with the Globe and Mail. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. So Max Bernier's in. Uh, he was out, now he's in. The Debates Commission uh, saying, in fact, he's meeting the criteria. They think he has a chance to win in some seats. So he's, he's going to be back in the two leaders' debates. Has the Commission got it right? Well, I'm, I'm going to declare a tiny bit of a conflict because I'm a bit of a moderator, so I'm just going to deflect that question, if you don't mind, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and say that I found the, the, um, the ruling kind of interesting because Maxime Bernier had to supply to the commission mm. a list of five ridings where he thought he would be competitive. And then they went out and did research into those five ridings. The commission actually went and polled in the ridings right. to see. And that was fascinating. Um, Two of them are in the GTA, uh, Pickering and um, Etobicoke North, right. which is sort of home of Ford Nation. Ford Nation headquarters. Uh, exactly. And then uh, Nipissing was another one. I'm not going to be able to name them all now because yeah. I forgot. But uh, the, the ruling in detail is almost as interesting as the decision itself, is uh, that for whatever reason, Maxime Bernier has put himself on the map in this campaign. We see that he's definitely present on social media. And I will say just, uh, I'm in favor of all kinds of debates and the more the merrier. I'm, you know, uh, I, I think we as journalists always want more discussion, not less. Right, Joel, what do you think? I was expecting uh, that the uh, first no would remain no, uh, because I, according to what I'd seen before, that he didn't meet those criteria. But, I guess the polls that were conducted, I think, were sufficient enough to convince the commission to reverse the decision. But I uh, saw Maxime Bernier uh, a couple of weeks ago, or last week, and he confidently told me that the commission would reverse its decision. I was skeptical then, and now I'm forced to <laughs> so, so <laughs> be he's, proven he's wrong. Psychic. Yeah. Into part of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, that means that uh, Maxime Bernier has a chance to make sure that his party survive at least until the end of this election, because he was falling into. Uh, almost anonymity in Quebec at least. Uh, we're not talking much about his policies, we're talking more about the other parties, the main parties won his race. Now he'll have a chance to uh, steal the show maybe yeah, and, and well, score some points. Christy, how does his presence at the debate change the debates? I mean, we haven't had them yet, of course, but he's. everybody knows what Max Bernier has been saying and it's going to be offside with a lot of the other candidates on that stage. Yeah, I think that uh, it's fair to say that he has been a bit of a pot stirrer in the past and he, I think, will come to the debate looking to stir the pot. Um, and I think that it will be really interesting to see how the other parties respond uh, to the change dynamic with him being part of the debate, specifically Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. Of course, uh, Scheer and uh, Bernier have quite the history when they were going up against each other to actually lead the Conservative Party and now Andrew Scheer can't ignore his presence uh, and again we, we don't know uh, about uh, the reach of the People's Party and whether or not uh, their support will translate in terms of seats uh, but Scheer's going to have to deal with that it's not just um, you know the straight target of going after Justin Trudeau right, in the and, debate. And we know he's not happy uh, he put out a statement today it's no big surprise from Andrew Scheer the Justin Trudeau's hand-picked debate panel used a liberal friendly pollster who attacks Andrew Scheer to ultimately justify Mr. Bernier's attendance at the debate. I, uh, that, I think that's regrettable. Um, it, rather than attack the debates, it's, uh, it's better to sort of attack but, your opponent. Yeah, yeah, anyway, but, he also pointed out that there's no, no, never, there hasn't been a, a, a party in this country with 3% popular support win a seat in an election, in a federal election since 1949, I think the Conservatives wrote. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, there, those attacks, I think, were... Uh, as, as uh, Susan mentioned, regrettable because it, it's sort of attacking the legitimacy of the commission and this was put together to sort of take out the uh, uh, organization of the debates out of the political uh, parties. Now, remember though, the first debate that will take place that Justin Trudeau will take part in will be the TVI debate and Mr. Bernier will not be invited to that one and that's a French debate and so that debate may uh, set the tone for the two other debates that will take place the following week. So I will be watching that one also very closely as to what impact, if already, Mr. Maxime Bernier's participation will have in that debate, whether they'll mention their name or mention some of his policies. The uh, Green Party unveiled its its platform today, Christy, with, uh, of course, a big focus on climate change and the environment. What we haven't seen yet is a costing that's coming. Uh, uh, 
what do we make of what we saw from the Greens? Clearly, they're out there to try and say we're more than the climate change party, and they have all these other free tuition, all kinds of stuff. Uh, what do you think the play is here from Elizabeth May? Um, I think that uh, there definitely is an effort uh, to try and target uh, people who might be uh, looking at the NDP and wondering whether or not people should actually take them uh, as seriously as previous campaigns. Uh, if you look at the uh, proposals that are contained within the platform, a heavy focus on uh, Indigenous peoples, of reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, uh, looking at, again, a, a livable income, uh, as you mentioned, free tuition, a really strong focus on social policy within the platform and again we without the the costing numbers we're not sure how this is all going to shake out today she specifically said she's not trying to target the NDP um, but we have seen and I think this has actually been an interesting story in this campaign this rivalry and we saw it at play in the McLean's debate as well where May and Jagmeet Singh were way more confrontational than they ever really have been before going at each other about you know, again, Elizabeth May suggests that the NDP is not going to actually be able to to cost out uh, their uh, policy proposals. So um, I actually think that uh, the the platform, in, in many regards, is heavy on policy, social policy, and that seems directed towards picking up progressive voters. Um, what do you think, Susan? I, I thought one of the most interesting things she said today was when she was talking about, first of all, she, nobody runs for prime minister. She was giving a little right. political How science Canadian lesson. elections work. <laughs> That's right, yes. But uh, she was saying, uh, she said, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to be prime minister, chances are. And uh, I want to be the conscience of Parliament, as Christy said. Wait yes, a minute, that's the NDP, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to be what the NDP used to be. Mm -hmm. So it was in the most gentle way possible. She said, if you want to elect, that, that the NDP did great things, Medicare, the flag, all those things happened when there was an NDP minority in Parliament. But now, was the flag part of that? Anyway, I'm not going to fact check Elizabeth May here. But, um, but what she did say very gently was, that she is running to be the conscience of parliament in a minority parliament. And that, I, I can actually see people leaning back and saying, that sounds not bad. Right. I can see a pattern there with the Green Party. The, the, their platform on the environment is appealing to the youth. Now, offering free tuition fees will also appeal to those people and may mobilize enough youth to vote for them and that may make a difference in some ridings where uh, the youth is sufficient numbers. Because talking to my daughter, I want to give this anecdotal evidence. She goes to CEGEP in Quebec and all of her friends who are there plan to vote for Green, even though they don't know much about the platform. They don't want to vote Green because there, there's a strong element associated with uh, environment and the Green Party. So uh, now the tuition fees may bring <laughs> another load of uh, supporters and those people are easy to mobilize. I think if they know that there is something in it for them, it might be the tipping point for them to vote for Green Party. That's, a, that's a, an interesting point you've raised too, right? Because the, the party, uh, it, it may be reasonable, reasonable to assume that the, the, the party popular support may actually be ahead of the party's ability to translate it into votes, right? right? Yeah. 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 Like the ground game yeah. is you have all the, to your case, if you have all these people, yeah, we think we're going to go green, then the next week, well, how do we do it? Where do we go? Yeah. Who's the candidate and all that stuff? And that's where a ground game and a party, you know, machi machinery pitches in, right? Exactly. And, and I think it's, you watch this, uh, this, this, well, I want to be the conscious, uh, conscience of parliament. The, is, is that the first, is that one of the steps along the way of this other narrative she's playing, which is vote the way you want? Mm -hmm. Like, don't be, if we're going to have a minority parliament, like, it's, it's fine to vote for the party you want to vote for. Don't be worried about who's going to win and who's going to come second and how tight it's going to be. This is the election to vote for who you want. I mean, she's really playing that up. Yeah, and I think that, again, you know, according to public opinion polls and a number of public opinion polls, there are a lot of people who are shopping around right now mm -hmm. to figure yeah. out where they're going to go. And so I think that that message seems to be directed at those who are undecided uh, to say, you know, maybe this time around you can actually vote the way that yeah, you want to. Yeah, we heard from David Coletto earlier in our program. There's a, there's a pool of voters out there that uh, will not vote for Andrew Scheer or Justin Trudeau. And yeah. that, that's the... That's the that's sort of the fertile ground for both Greens and New Democrats to try and, and win those people over. I mean, it's a... I, I found that finding really interesting and about polarization in Canada, too. Like, we are seeing that second choice is evaporating, and that's what happened in the United States as well. You know, people just don't have a second choice. Right. You know, you have to... You're either on one side or the other, and I, 
I, I really see echoes of that in uh, that Coletto well, finding. Let's talk about the uh, Liberals and Conservatives today. Justin Trudeau was announcing more child care money, $532 million more a year for pre preschool programs and after school programs for kids under 10. Uh, to help offset the fees of those programs for parents. And Andrew Scheer is re-announcing, re-promising, promising, not even sure what the like, promising to re-promising. <laughs> re uh, all, all the Harper area tax cuts, era tax cuts basically are coming back with Andrew Scheer. Uh, like, what does I, that tell, does that, that say they're on, they knew it was good and popular and so let's, why would we not, or that's the extent of our pro pro program. I mean. You could say that those two parties are into this recycling <laughs> business <laughs> because yeah. uh, the Liberals have been promising help for childcare for many years, yeah. if not many decades, and with limited success because they need the cooperation of the provinces. And in this case, too, they will need the cooperation of, of Doug Ford, uh, 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 for example, or other premiers. So and it seems to me, when I'm watching the Prime Minister today, like he knows that. Clearly, he, he knows that. that. And he was yeah. prepared to say but that it's and ready for the question about, hey, Doug Ford's going to put roadblocks up in your way. And he made a point of saying, that's the thing the voters have to think about. There's yeah. mm -hmm. that kind of thing you want from Doug Ford or the kind of thing we're talking about. And Basically, the role of government. And, and it written. allowed him to bring back Doug Ford into the national conversation, which is not helping necessarily Andrew Scheer in, in, in Ontario. As for Andrew Scheer, I mean, those taxes had popular appeal, I think, uh, to, to some point, but I think it was limited. And they still feel that it's the best way to give back money. But for a, a person with limited revenues, you still have to spend the money to, to get that tax right, credit. And right. so uh, people who have expert in fiscal policy say this is not the best way to help people. It, it, do, it does raise the, I mean, it, it really, I think, as I'm watching it, it does bring sharper focus to the choices, right? Yeah. You know, people are best, give them back money by way of tax cuts or credits let them decide what to do with it and then the argument around government intervention what is the role of government i think though they are driven by this same fundamental issue which of course we know is going to be a central issue or if not a top issue in this campaign which is affordability and mm -hmm. the fact that even again middle class families there are people um you know we we see that you know justin trudeau has talked about the middle class and those working hard to join it in fact the research suggests that um, you know the working poor, if you will, that that segment of the population is getting bigger. That people really are struggling with things like housing, like paying for yeah. childcare, um, basic I, affordability issues. Yeah. I can tell you, I pay a huge a, a mortgage payment in childcare every month. It is a huge policy issue that really strikes at the the cord of what a lot of people are dealing with. And then. This is interesting what she says because that kind of policies have limited appeal in Quebec because Quebec has already have got its own it, plan. Yeah, so yeah. Mr. Trudeau is sort of uh, appealing to more Ontario voters and West when he makes that kind of proposal because in Quebec we've had daycare like a uh, funded daycare program for the last 20 years. But it, but you are right. It's a, it's a fundamental ideological divide, and I think it the, it hasn't shaped up in the campaign yet. But you see it in, even in the in the slogans for the parties. It's yeah. time for you, the individual, to get ahead. Conservatives mm -hmm. are very much about appealing. If, if people were just left to their own devices, things would run fine. The Liberals are more, you need government there to back you up. So Choose Forward is about a government, and the slogan for the Conservatives is, it's about you getting ahead. They're both about directional movement, but one is individual, one is the group. Let's finish on this. The, uh, we saw from David Coletto, from other pollsters as well, now six days in, and it's still relatively early, but the polls kind of reflect what we saw for several months leading up to the vote almost. And I, I think, you, are you surprised we're seeing no separation at the top between the two leaders and what, what's it going to take? Well, the ballot Or question, maybe it won't. No. It, the ballot questions and the debate, I think, will have a big influence over those numbers will move in one direction or the other. But I guess to um, Susan's point, I think it shows that we're maybe getting more and more polarized in this country as to the, the best option to govern the country. And it shows with the close race that we're seeing. And also regional differences. Uh, the Liberals are popular in Quebec and are ahead in, in Ontario, but the Tories are very strong in the West. So there's a regional divide that will you know, um, but, but will have to be dealt with with whoever is elected. That's the uh, yeah, 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 but then we have the, the, the mechanics of our system are such that, I mean, we talk about the polarization, but that it, would, it seems to me that if you're, you know, not not everybody wants the polarization. If you're the conservatives, do you want you want maybe the message polarization? But if polarization comes down to conservatives, and it's largely the others lined up on the other side, and you want, if you're a conservative, don't you want all of them 
to do reasonably well because you split yes. all those votes, right? Uh, yes. And that's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And and by the way, the Conservative Party was uh, very happy that Jagmeet Singh had a good performance at the televised debate on Mc, uh, organized by McLean's and uh, CTTV. They hope that he does continue on that on that note to split the votes you know, on, yeah, on the left. Yeah. If, only, yeah. if yeah. only somebody promised electoral reform. <laughs> like that. Sorry, wrong election. <laughs> yes, wrong election. Elizabeth May is promising it again. Yeah. Uh, she said today. it was a massive betrayal. It's not just a broken yes, promise. Yes, she said that that's a number of times though. It wasn't yeah. just a broken promise, a massive betrayal. All right, um, we're out of time. Thank you all. We'll talk again. Thank you, Peter.